Because Sarah's a poor student, she's decided that she needs to spend all of her income, although she doesn't want to spend any more than that because that would increase her debt. The budget line shows just that situation, her spending all of her income, but no more. Now, of all the things which determines the amounts that we choose to spend, income is clearly the most important. We can extend that idea from individuals to whole societies. Not surprisingly, high-income countries tend to spend more than poorer ones. Societies spend more when their income is higher. This is true not only among countries, but also among regions within countries. One place to explore that idea is Germany, where the difference in income between different regions can be quite considerable. In Eastern Germany, incomes tend to be lower. Uh, in Wittenberg here, we've got unemployment at around about 20%. I lost my job because the factory closed down after reunification. Now it's getting worse. Wittenberger is turning into a town for retired people only. There's no future here anymore. It has been like this for a long time now, for at least five or six years. Well, I would say that I would certainly apply for a job somewhere else. There's no point in staying here. Employment is going down and down, more and more. Here in Western Germany, incomes tend to be relatively high. One of the highest areas of income is here in the Ruhr. We're in Dusseldorf, and average incomes here are maybe 20, 30 percent higher than they are in parts of East Germany. The main problem was that the economy in East Germany collapsed. This was mainly because the markets in Eastern Europe disappeared. As a result, there was a huge rise in unemployment. And now we're still facing this problem in East Germany. At the moment, we have an unemployment rate of well over 30 percent, and this is the main problem that bothers us. You don't see shops like this in Wittenberger. Lower incomes means lower consumption. Higher income place like Dusseldorf means that you've got higher income shops such as we've got here. After reunification, the German government decided to reduce these huge variations by taxing the people of the West to increase incomes in the East. This redistribution of income was thought to be beneficial for the country as a whole. However, before making such decisions, it's necessary to understand how changes in income affect consumption patterns. How can we get an idea of the relationship between incomes and spending? We can get an idea of this diagrammatically and mathematically. We can get consumption and income data for the different German regions and plot that data, where each spot on the diagram corresponds to one region's income and that region's consumption. When we plot that information, they show a pattern that is demonstrated on the diagram. As income plotted along the horizontal axis rises, so does consumption plotted on the vertical axis. In general, the poorer regions in Eastern Europe have lower levels of income and lower levels of consumption. It's not a perfect relationship because consumption is affected by things other than income, but we've plotted a best fit line. Now we can express this line in the form of a linear equation, and it has the form C equals A plus by, where C is consumption, the dependent variable, A is a constant, and By is some proportion of income Y. 
Let's focus for a moment on A. A is the amount of consumption even when there's zero income. It's a constant amount of consumption regardless of the level of income or as we economists say it's autonomous consumption. Consumption independent of the level of income. But as income rises, so does consumption. By how much does it rise? That's what little b tells us. As y increases from y1 to y2 on the diagram, consumption increases from c1 to c2. So b is the change in consumption, delta c, over the change in income, delta y. In this case, b is positive as income rises, consumption rises. And that term, delta c over delta y, we first met in an earlier film when we were discussing multipliers. Let's return now to our budget line. The general equation of a straight line is y equals a plus bx. And obviously it's the same form as the one we've just considered. Less obviously, it's of the same form as that budget line that we met earlier. We began with px times x plus py times y equals m or m equals px times x plus py times y. But we want y on the left-hand side, so we divide through now by py, and that gives us m over py equals px over py times x plus y. So y bringing that over to the left-hand side, equals m over py minus px over py times x. Now, m over py is the constant term in the general form A. px over py times x is of the same form as B times x. So this equation of the straight line is of the same general form for the budget line as it was for the consumption function. The only difference to note is that whereas bx is positive for a consumption function, the term px over py times x for the budget line is negative. So we've got a negative slope for the budget line. So we've seen how to plot coordinates of linear equations by starting off with data on German consumption. But we've been able to generalize that and show how to derive such equations from data when the data approximates to a linear form.